There's a big problem with the American Express green card, which Amex needs to fix right now. It's not a bad card at all, but it has two major problems that are very evident if you've been watching the credit card space. There's a perceived value proposition issue and an even larger misperception around prestige. But I'm here to argue that this card has a target audience. But first, we need to remove the noise that's been clouding good judgment around this card. For those new to the channel, I'm Richard Debs and I'm an avid traveler. If you're watching this, you likely are too. So go ahead and subscribe to see how I use credit cards to enable this travel habit of mine. It's clear that the American Express green card suffers from perception issues as it relates to value proposition and prestige. Poor thing. We're gonna tackle these issues separately. But first, let's clear up the notion that holding a credit card conveys any kind of status. Credit cards are essentially tools to help facilitate purchase transactions and they all have their use cases. Well, at least that's how I think of credit cards and you should too. Stick around for section two where I'll dissect credit cards and their association with prestige. I'll then close with who can benefit mostly by acquiring the American Express green card. First up, the green card's value proposition. The card has an annual fee of $150. Let's dive into the value we get and the available credits. Here are the multipliers. What's a multiplier? Here's what a multiplier is. You get 3x on travel, and this includes flights, hotels, car rentals, tours, campgrounds, and vacation rentals. And it also includes travel purchased through third-party sites, as well as through amextravel.com. The 3x multiplier is a very competitive point earning rate when booking travel outside of a card portal. For context, this is on par with the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the City Premier. Next, you get 3X on transit, and this includes trains, taxis, rideshares, ferries, tolls, parking, buses, and subways. Again, this multiplier is on par with the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Pretty impressive so far. If you're a city slicker, this is the perfect opportunity for you to amass tons of American Express membership reward points, or as we call them, MR points. You also get 3X on dining, and this includes takeout and delivery. This is pretty much a sweet spot multiplier offered by a plethora of other credit cards, of which many have no annual fee. Think of the Chase Freedom cards, the Saver One, and even the Built MasterCard. And it earns 1X on all other purchases. This is R Squared Travel Rewards, so we gotta get into some travel credits. $189 Clear Credit. Waiting in long security lines is a thing of the past for me, thanks to Clear and TSA PreCheck. I, however, value Clear at $150, given that there's always discounts when you link a frequent flyer program to your Clear account. Next, the green card gives you $100 in Lounge Buddy credits. Lounge Buddy is a great option for those folks who are not interested in shelling out large annual fees for a premium travel card like the American Express Platinum, Chase Sapphire Reserve, or the Capital One Venture X. With Lounge Buddy, you may search airport lounges at your desired airport and book lounge access for four hours for around $50 a visit. This credit will cover the cost of two visits a year. If this is your only travel credit card, then I'd expect that you'd enroll in Clear and utilize the Lounge Buddy credits. The green card, as a result, can easily have an effective annual fee of negative $100 or $100 in savings. So the green card has an annual fee of $150 minus $150 Clear credit and minus $100 Lounge Buddy credit. If you don't utilize Lounge Buddy, then the effective annual fee is $0 or break even. Let's talk about some of the other benefits offered by the American Express green card. We're gonna get into some insurance and protection items. The first two are car rental loss and damage insurance and trip delay insurance. Not sexy subjects, the details are on the screen. But I really wanna call out baggage insurance and purchase protection. If you're gonna be a traveler, you want baggage insurance. This kicks in for damage, loss, or stolen, up to $1,250 for carry-on, and up to $500 for checked baggage. For purchase protection, it protects against stolen or damaged items within 90 days of purchase. Let's pause there for a second. I think a lot of people sleep on this benefit. This benefit covers you for up to $1,000 per occurrence and $50,000 per calendar year. Here's a pro tip. Always take photos of your receipts and store those photos in your personal cloud space. Most US retailers offer to email receipts, which you should then upload to the cloud. Late last year, I misplaced one of my new earbuds. I mean, they were stolen. So I filed a claim and Amex replaced them in no time. Don't sleep on purchase protection. I pretty much only purchase tech gear with one of my Amex cards for the purchase protection. So guys, think of the things that you purchase 
phones, speakers, my couch back here, anything, this, this cup, the green card, and pretty much any Amex card will give me purchase protection for 90 days should anything happen to this. Lastly is extended warranty. So you get to add an additional one year warranty on top of your items warranty of five years or less. So let's summarize the green cards value proposition section. We've seen that the card can have an effective annual fee of $0 or put $100 back in your pocket. But there's a catch here. Clear is not wildly available at all US airports and two visits to a lounge per year is very limiting. So is the American Express green card worth $150? Let's cut the suspense. No, it's not. Amex, you gotta fix it. I'm gonna get into later in this video what I think a decent price point for this card should be. Section two is the prestige issue with the green card. When it comes to equating status with credit cards, American Express epitomizes this idea. Amex routinely targets high net worth individuals. Given that their most popular cards are charge cards like the gold and platinum, it's definitely a smart strategy to mitigate risk. Celebrities then perpetuate the idea of status and credit cards by flaunting the Amex Centurion cards or the black card. Therein lies the problem. The regular Amex consumer cards are nowhere near the stratosphere of the black card. And yet, regular folks often get caught up that the Amex consumer cards are a flex. Some people still think that this card is a flex. It's not. Sorry, but you're not. Anyone can apply for this card. It's not by invitation only. Anyone can get it. However, they view the green, gold, platinum lineup as a status tier progression versus the fact that each card has its own use case. Most of you watching are likely knowledgeable about credit cards. But if you're not in the credit card world of points and miles, you likely think of the green gold platinum lineup as a status tier. As a result, most folks acquire the gold card with an eye on upgrading to the platinum card. When in reality, you get benefit from holding both because it's not a status progression. They all have their own use cases. This mindset then leaves the green card struggling for attention when it's truly a good card for the right person. So let's talk about who the right person is for the green card and some of the recommended changes that I have for Amex. The perfect profile for the green card benefits is a city dweller who holds no other travel credit cards, who travels once or twice a year in and out of airports in the US which offer clear. And lounge access and fast tracking through security are not high on your priority list because you don't travel often. However, these benefits are not in line with the annual fee of 150 for the Amex green card given the competition that's out there. I recommend that Amex lowers the annual fee of the green card to $95, which would be in line with the City Premier and the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Keep in mind that both the City Premier and the Sapphire Preferred have free worker cards that make them even more valuable. What's a worker card? A worker card is a card that you use on a day-to-day -day basis to earn most of your points. And you can use those cards in conjunction with the Premier and Preferred in this case to transfer out those points to travel partners. This further leaves the Amex green card in a weird spot, even at $95 when compared to the competition. Amex does offer two worker cards which offer MR points. They're the Amex everyday cards, which you can see on the screen here. However, these cards are not remotely competitive and I can't in good conscience recommend them to anyone. These cards simply exist because Amex is Amex. And I can't help but think that Amex is just trading on their name. My other recommended change is that Amex needs to market the use cases of the lineup to dispel the notion of it being a status tier progression. Folks need to understand that all three cards work together with their own unique use cases. One can easily hold all three cards at the same time where they extract value for the green cards transit category extract value from the gold card for dining and supermarket spend, then round out the lineup with the platinum for luxury travel. However, this can only happen if the annual fee for the green card is significantly lowered. I would argue that there's a case to be made for an annual fee even lower than $95. Let me know what you think of the card in the comments. What do you think is the right annual fee for the green card? And what do you think the Amex trifecta should look like? The green gold platinum versus the blue business plus gold platinum. Thank you for watching until the end. Since you've gotten this far, it only makes sense to like, share, and subscribe to help give this channel some visibility. As always, take care and be good to each other.